Hello and welcome. In this video, we will see how CA's operational intelligence solution help reduce alarm noise and expedite root cause analysis. Now what we are looking at is a set of services supported by my enterprise. Now services could be external services or could be internal applications that are used by employees. Now for each of these services as part of the operations team, it is my responsibility to ensure the uptime and health and ensure that my users are able to access it without any issues. Now let's look at how CS operational intelligence helps me achieve that. What we see here is a list, list of services. A service is comprised of various CIs across application, infrastructure, and network domain. These components are being monitored by various monitoring tools and data from these monitoring tools, whether they are CA or third party, is being ingested into this platform. There are three ways to create a service. First is to use all the monitoring data being collected and relationships across them. Two, to use service definitions and CIs from CMDB. And three, to, to define rules to construct a custom service hierarchy or custom service definition. For each of these services, we have various KPIs visible. We can see some business KPIs like user sessions and revenue. And we also have some technical KPIs computed by the platform like availability, which indicates the overall health of the service and the underlying CIs. We see alarm volume, which is again a collection and aggregation of alarms across all the CIs that support the service. And lastly, risk, which is an indicator that helps us identify any potential issues that may impact the service health or the service availability. Our exercise today is to identify a potential problem that's plaguing some of our services. For the demo's sake, we are going to leverage the payment service. As I dive into the payment service, I can see historical information. Firstly, there is a time picker on top, which lets me select the duration for which I want to analyze this information. For now, I have selected a month. So I can see over a month, the risk score, the availability, the number of user sessions, the alarms overview, and the source or the geolocation of the various user sessions. Now our problem at hand is to identify a potential problem that is impacting the payment service. For this, we will focus on the alarms overview. In terms of alarms, we receive alarms from all the monitoring tools that are monitoring the various components that comprise of the service. We call this as raw alarm. We also see anomalies, which is a capability of the operational intelligence solution, which uses machine learning algorithms to identify deviation from normal based Based on the metric data being ingested. This algorithm also automatically assigns different severities based on uh, the degree of deviation from normal behavior. Now these alarms across root cause and anomalies are correlated together using our autocorrelation algorithms. These algorithms typically leverage the three T's for analysis. The three T's stand for topology, which is the relationship between the different CIs. It uses temporal correlation or time. And third is text, which is the alarm message itself. Now this concept of autocorrelation is called as a service alarm. Now we see four service alarms of different severity. What you also notice is the noise reduction, which is due to the automatic correlation or clustering. Certain alarms are annotated as more important or as likely root causes versus many other redundant or uh, uh, duplicate alarm and this leads to excellent noise reduction ratios now let's dive into the critical alarm and see what it's comprised of as we expand this service alarm we will see all the related alarms that are part of this correlation what you will always also notice is that one of these alarms which is the first one here with the blue arrow has been annotated as a likely root cause and this helps me get focused and channel all my troubleshooting efforts towards the identified metric and identified device as I look at these alarms, I look at the source product column, which gives me an indication of where these alarms or which monitoring tools these alarms are coming from. As you can see, they are spread across my APM products, my infrastructure monitoring products and logs. So certain interesting log events have been promoted and participate in this correlation. Now, if I dive into the uh, likely root cause alarm, 
I can see the raw metric data that has been used for the analysis. The anomaly detection algorithm computes new baselines which are represented as green highways. Let's zoom in and look at another example of anomalies. Now in this view, you will notice there are three bands, common, probable, and rare, which indicate the, based on the historical analysis, the different baselines that have been calculated. And then the current metric behavior is compared and anomaly alarms are raised when the metric is it shows abnormal behavior. These little triangles represent the different anomaly severities. When we come back to this view, we can also go to the overview tab and get some additional information about this alarm. So source, the duration, the creation date, etc. But what we also have access to is logs and this can help us identify any logging activity that has happened for the duration of this alarm. When clicking on this logs you will actually see a filtered view of which logs data has been ingested from. So in this example we see that there are certain logs from syslog and we can dive in further to look at a filtered view based on the device. There are some interesting charts which indicate severity distribution, event timeline, etc. and also shows you a raw view which can be used for further analysis or verification of the likely root cause. If this component turns out to be a shared component, you can not only see the current service that it's impacting, but you can also see any other services that might have been impacted due to this uh, potential root cause. Now, once we have identified a potential root cause, the next thing to do is to take action against it. Here we have various options. You can either choose to assign this alarm to a different user or acknowledge it for yourself. You can create tickets via various popular ticketing systems or ITSM systems. You can send this out an, as an email, or you can also define policies to automatically execute remedial workflows. So in this case, we have integrated operational intelligence with CA's atomic workload or orchestration tool. And this allows us to execute remedial workflows. Now, clicking on this link would take us to the atomic product where we can look at the actual workflow and look at the results of uh, the workflow execution. Now, this is a simple example where the Kubernetes cluster was reconfigured so that additional resources were available to it to address the memory problem or the memory spike we see as part of the anomaly alarm. To recap, we started by identifying from a list of services, uh, the services that were in critical health. We then drilled down into the list of alarms and not every alarm, but we looked at the autocorrelation view, which allowed us to focus on the alarms that are likely root cause and essentially ignore any duplicates or any less relevant or symptomatic alarms. And finally, based on the root cause that was identified, we were not only able to verify by looking at logs, metrics, and alarms all in context, but also take action against these alarms via email, uh, ticketing systems, or with execution of remedial workflows. This concludes our demo. Thank you. Thank you.